The ups and downs of gas prices in recent years rivals the scariest roller coaster. Motorists are left confused and angry by the wild price swings. In part because Washington politicians, obsessed with the blame game, point fingers in the wrong direction. So what really sets the price of gasoline? Is it evil speculators? Is it evil OPEC? Is it the government and its taxes? Is it oil company conspiracies and price fixing? Well, not really. What sets the price of gasoline is supply and demand. In fact, government reports suggest that 76%, 75% of uh, the price of gasoline simply reflects the world price of a barrel of oil. The other 25% is things like refiner profits, they have to refine the fuel before you can buy it, government taxes, uh, and production, uh, other, other producers and, and sellers have to have their profit to stay in business as well. But about three quarters of the price of gas is the, based on the price of oil. Let's take a closer look at that 24%. Taxes are a major component. The tax bite in a gallon of gasoline is nearly equal to the costs of refining, distribution, and marketing combined. Outdated air pollution regulations also play a role. In order to fulfill air pollution reduction plans in states and localities across the country, gasoline sold in the United States has been fractioned into about 17 different boutique fuels, sold in dozens of discrete markets. That means if supply gets tight in one area, you can't just bring in gas from other places, which means local regional shortages lead to price spikes. With three grades of gasoline per fuel, refiners are producing over 50 separate blends, Refiners in some areas have a virtual monopoly in their market, and we know what happens to prices in a monopoly. There are special blends of fuel and additives that are um, required by air pollution agencies in accordance with the Clean Air Act. Each region has different rules. Sometimes it splits cities in half. You have half of a city is in one region and the half is in another air quality region, and so they have, you, can't, you can't sell the gas from right across the street one gas station can't sell it to another. According to U.S. government sources such as the Energy Information Administration and the U.S. Government Accountability Office, boutique fuel requirements increase the absolute price of gas sold in America, and they increase price volatility and the height of price spikes as a function of the distance to market of boutique fuel producers and consumers. And then there's the fact that a dollar just doesn't buy as much out in the world these days. As Robert Murphy of the Institute for Energy Research told Congress, holding everything else constant, the dollar depreciation alone from early 2009 can explain a 20.5% increase in oil prices. It is on the basis of such calculations that a recent Joint Economic Committee report estimated that Federal Reserve policies have added almost 57 cents to the price of a gallon of gasoline for American motorists. But what about the dreaded speculators? While speculation has proven capable of causing short-term price spikes in the past, Cato Institute scholars Jerry Taylor and Peter Van Doren show there is little evidence that speculation is a cause of oil price hikes since 2005. They find that rather than increasing price volatility, it turns out that speculation increases after price volatility appears and tends to damp it down rather than make it worse. Understanding what goes into the price of gas is key to understanding what the government could do to lower gasoline prices. Phasing out things like the fuel, the boutique fuel market would help bring gas prices down. Taxes are, not, are also a significant part of, of what brings uh, prices up. So in the short term, if you really want to bring gas prices down, you can do things like a tax holiday, suspending these regulations, the blending regulations, so that gas is free to move from markets where it's cheaper and more abundant to places where it's, it's uh, more scarce and less abundant. Um, other than that, you basically have to just watch the world price of oil to know what you're going to pay for your gas. Thank you.